Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us again. Or if you are joining us for the first time, uh, welcome to Palimpsest Live. We are the International Art Alliance. And if you would like to know more about us or about our project, then you can visit our website at internationalartalliance.org. Um, so before we get into our artist interview of today, uh, let me uh, introduce the rest of these awesome artists that are part of the International Art Alliance. We have uh, Lara, who creates these powerful portraits in the UK. Then we have Cheryl, who creates vibrant vistas in Australia. We have Ross, who uh, creates these beautiful sp spiritual scenes in Los Angeles. Rose, who is um, joining us today after having surgery, so she's the real trooper. Um, she creates these, extracts the essence of nature all the way in Vancouver. And then Stephanie creates a powerful, um, uh, paints the power of performance in Toronto. And I am Denise and I uh, capture the cities that I cherish in St. Jerome, which is about 45 minutes north of Montreal. And um, before we uh, get to our subject of the day, which is Julie, uh, who creates these beautiful, stunning seascapes in Rhode Island. Um, I want to let you all know that if you have any questions uh, throughout all of this, to post them in the comments, and then we try to get to them, to them either uh, at the end of this, uh, this broadcast or maybe early next, next week, because sometimes these things take a little bit more time than we um, expect them to. <laughs> um, so yeah, Julie. Uh, before we uh, get into uh, questioning you, um, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and your, your art? Well, I'm a native Rhode Islander, a uh, fisherman's daughter, and actually uh, did a little fishing myself for a couple of years for a living, catching eels. And um, I would set pots, and it was probably one of the best parts of my life because I was just immersed with nature and on one end of the river was the osprey and the swan with their babies and on the other end was mallard ducks that I would feed every day some of my bait and um, but then after I hauled my pots I would bring a painting down to the lee of the beach oftentimes you know I'd start in April hauling my pots so I'd be um working on a painting that I had. Back in those days, there wasn't as many people. Now that same spot is just inundated with people, but it was a beautiful time. I really loved being there. One funny story about that particular river that I fished at the time, there was an older man with a house right on the river and he had cows. And this river is called Narrow River and the cows would wade out into the eel grass and there was a narrow path for the boats to go. And when I would be coming along with my little boat, the cows would all look up at the same time and follow me and watch me go by. So I have a lot of really good memories about that. Uh, you know, awesome. if, if I talk too much, I'll answer all your questions. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds really great. So I was actually wondering because um, you, you, when you paint, um, I think you try to really um, capture that connection to nature and sort of give that um, that to people uh, to so they can cherish that in their homes. And now that you're running this really really busy art uh, practice, with you have to uh, create your paintings and you. Um, you, you teach also and you run a gallery space and you have to prepare for shows in the summer. Do you still have time for that connection to nature? Do you still um, like paint outside or, or um, like how, how, do you still have time for that yourself? I make time because that's really <laughs> important. Yeah, I can't, I can't not do that. Plain air painting is part of my training and um, so it's really important for me to get out there to keep my eye fresh with seeing nature from life um, and now in particular I'm teaching that method to my students so it's important that I keep my eye fresh because the camera just doesn't catch or capture um, the color of light 
uh, in the way that your eye can see it. There's just some de deep subtleties that only your eye can see. And so, um, but I mean, on top of that is just being immersed in the moment. I find that my work comes out even better because the sensation of the senses get infused into the work. So there's just, I have to do it. There's, I don't get to do it as much as I'd like, but I'm kind of working my way towards that where I'll have all, you know, the time to do that. So. That's awesome. <laughs> I can totally see uh, the need for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, Cheryl, you have a question for uh, Julie. Yeah. So what time do you go plein air painting? Do you I go like, really early? Yes, well, um, I like to go where the light is kind of low. So early mornings is a great, and you know, the other thing is there's less people around. So I enjoy kind of having the um, surroundings to myself, but yeah, early mornings or late afternoons. Um, I avoid noontime because the sun is directly above and it's less interesting in terms of light conditions. So, um, so those are the times that I like to go. Yeah, so do, so do you drag your students along also? Well, I'm going to. Um, <laughs> I'm preparing them. You know, uh, they've been indoors. I've had them work from life with indoor things, but um, I've been saying, all right, now we're going to get out there as soon as this weather breaks. You know, <laughs> I have, you know, some older people that, you know, they're active and are able but it is pushing them a little bit, you know, to get out there. It takes, you know, a little bit of physicality between lugging your stuff and just being out there. So. I can't right. agree. <laughs> awesome. Lara, do you have a question for Julie? Sorry. Yes, uh, hi Julie. Um, my question is, uh, when uh, you decide that your painting, you have, you know what you are going to paint, and you find yourself in front of the canvas, uh, what kind of emotion arises inside you? And um, yeah, if you if you can explain uh, what 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 uh, what what are your emotions in front of the canvas? The plain canvas. It's uh, it's taken me a while to figure out words to go with my emotions. <laughs> I'm not very good at that. Um, you know, the time that I was eeling and that well of emotion, I it just took me. I can't even say that I can explain that feeling now completely, but joy and and um and happiness. Oh my word. Um, <laughs> So um, I get excited over light conditions and you know that is what really attracts me to a scene. So that's what inspires me to paint it. And so um, it just brings me a lot of uh, joy and happiness because I really love nature. I love the beauty of it. Um, it's just amazing in every way. And then I, then I get to actually infuse my interpretation of it on canvas. It's different the emotion that you feel uh, when you paint uh, outside than the emotion that you feel when you paint inside. It's a little I different. Mean. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I definitely feel all, you know, like I'm experiencing the moment when I'm outdoors, mm -hmm. whereas indoors, I'm recalling the moment. So there's a little difference there, but you know, I still enjoy it. I am still, it's amazing because it's been over, uh, probably over 50, around 50 years that I've been painting and I never get tired of it. So. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's always fun and exciting and that's all I wanna do. 
sorry. All of a sudden my phone decided to go off. <laughs> Thank you. But you're Julie. super popular. <laughs> <laughs> Rose, is there anything you would like to know from Julie? You're uh, you're muted. <laughs> Rose or Ross? Yeah, there's there's Rose. there's a lot that I'd like to uh, learn from Julie in terms of technique and skill, but uh, for this context, I I'm interested to know if there was a, a, any time there was a specific event or moment where you catalyzed that this landscape seascape is what I need to do. A lot of it had, I mean, I love painting. I just love oil paints. I just love the act of painting and the challenge of it, you know? So when I decided that it's been a little bit of a process of deciding how to market myself. And so because of how I grew up, my background, it became kind of a natural thing. You know, many people have said to me, how do you paint water? Water is so hard to paint. And I never had a problem painting water. It just kind of came natural to me. And so a combination of business and my background and the fact that water and ocean, all of that is so natural. It just made sense that that's where I brand myself and I focus on and I never get tired of it. And I live in a place that it's all around me, little Rhode Island, so. So it's pretty authentic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, That's Julie. awesome. Thank you. Stephanie. What would you like to know? Julie, I would like to know, <laughs> are there any aspects of your painting um, that have been with you since the beginning? So uh, something that you do either like prepping your palette or your paintbrushes or your paint or mixing your paint, something that you um, started doing at the very, very beginning and you thought, no, this works perfectly. I'm not letting go of this. I'm keeping it going up until the present moment. So you, uh, I'm not sure I understand your question, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay, no, I guess maybe there's not. I guess what I'm asking is, um, is there anything that you, when you started painting that you sort of, um, I guess a habit that you created or a way of, of doing things, a way of painting that you created or uh, that, yeah, that, that you created that you've held on to um since the beginning and if not that's fine i have another backup question for you <laughs> <laughs> well i actually um i studied how to paint the color of light uh it started actually with an artist in rhode island who came from the cape cod school of art and he um studied with henry henchy which goes back to hawthorne which goes back to monet and um so I started with him and I learned a certain process that teaches you how to see color, like a, a real in-depth way of seeing color. That's why using your natural eye is really important. Um, and then I went to the Cape and actually learned with a colleague of his and she broke it down into some simpler steps that I learned from her and from, and that has been the foundation of my work ever since. Mm. So um, now that I'm teaching that, it's kind of bringing me back because I became very uh, intuitive with it. And I'm having to explain this to my students. And one of the things that I have to impress in the very beginning is keep it simple. And mm -hmm. so I try to, well, as I'm painting, I'm like, I just taught them something and I'm like, oh yeah, this is where I end up applying this, <laughs> you know, because I end up doing it intuitively. But, um, so I'm not really thinking about it as much when I'm painting, but a lot of it is 
keeping simplicity in the beginning, going for the large massive impression of the color note, and then building from there, keeping your values and your colors intact or your starting color note intact um, till you bring it to the final real or local color of the scene. And so that's, that's in my mind as I paint, I'm always thinking along those lines. Um, but I break the rules because I, I've moved into finding my own path. So this is where I want to take my students to where they can take this foundation and find their own path with their painting. So I've, I've explored a lot of different things like abstract to abstracted realism to, you know, a variety of, I really want the loose feel in my work. I, you know, I want it to, I want people to get lost in it and find a connection of their own. And so that's always a, a challenge, but because I, I started out copying and doing everything exact. And so sometimes if I don't pay attention, I'll go back into grabbing those details and I, I don't want to do that, so. Right, wow. I have to say the way you depicted the light, you were talking about, you know, getting, playing with light in that painting behind you is just, Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. I can see the sun. Really like I can, I can feel the sun. I can feel the warmth of it. It's great. <laughs> Thank you. So Ross, I'm sure there's something you would like to know from Julie. Thank you, Denise. Hi, Julie. Hi. Um, well, Rhode Island is such a beautiful, sparkling place. It has such a long coastline, even though it's so tiny. Have you visited other places and and thought, oh, I'd like to paint this place too. Or is Rhode Island just so much of where your heart is that it's it's your spiritual connection? And and that's that like where else, where else would you want to go and paint? California. <laughs> 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 I um I know of places like Carmel and you know other places in California that I would love to go and paint, but um as far as driving distance right now, like uh, fairly close. I love going to Massachusetts. There's a lot of coastline, South Shore, um, Gloucester, Rockport, um, you know, uh, what's it called? I said it already, maybe Gloucester. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of Cape, the Cape. I love the Cape. I learned down in Provincetown and I try to get down there as often as I can, the pandemic kind of slowed me down with that, but um, I love to go down there and paint. It's, you know, so um, Connecticut is right on the border of where I live right now. So I've been venturing out into Connecticut and finding interesting coastline and marsh spots. You know, um, there's a place called Barnes Island that I discovered recently in Connecticut and it's kind of quiet and remote so much so that I went one winter and there was nobody around and I was kind of like afraid. <laughs> you know, I was just, I didn't know like who might pop out of the woods and get me even an animal, you know, <laughs> but uh, it's beautiful there. Um, really cool marsh configurations and so. That's my story. Awesome. <laughs> no, you're, you're fine. I thought Ross wanted to say something, <laughs> but I think he's good. Okay, so um, before we end this, I, I was wondering, because I read on Facebook the other day that you've been cheating on us with another artist. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you're doing another collaboration. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I actually have a couple of shows coming up, um, one with two artist friends in April. Um, I just posted an event and was kind of laughing at myself because it's at our local courthouse, like judicial center. And I was like, you don't have to commit a crime to go see the show. <laughs> 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 but we're going to have an opening there April 9th. And that's with uh, Victoria Corey and um, Pamela Reed, who are local artists. And then 
uh, Eric Lutz, who is also from Rhode Island, but he is also an actor. So you, if you watch Law and Order or um, How to Get Away with Murder or any of those, you've seen him in those um, types of shows, but he is, his father was a well-known painter in our area and he's followed suit. So we're collaborating for a show in May at another former courthouse, but it's now a center for the arts. And so that's gonna be a big deal. Um, and that's yeah. May 12th that the opening for that will be. That's so, awesome. Congratulations. And I'll have different work at each one. So if anyone- Different type of work also? Uh, well, I mean, still my coastal scenes, but they won't be the same, you know, um, there'll be different paintings. So people can go to both shows and see something different. See something different. That's awesome. Wow. <laughs> and we heard you're also teaching, right? Yes, so I have an online- learn more about that? I have an online course that's a, co a comprehensive course where I teach color theory, composition, drawing, um, and kind of prep the students to go into learning how to see the color of light. And so then that's kind of like a, a middle section of the course that um, we have deliberate exercises for them to do. And from there, once they've grasped that understanding, that's when I take them on the journey of finding their path because I've done really super realistic work and then I've done abstract and everything in between. So I feel like I could help them explore thing, you know, a path for themselves to express who they are as a person. And, and then I also have some in, in studio students that I'm teaching, so. That's and those are the students you're going to take uh, on trips outside. Yeah, and uh, I'm looking forward to taking them plain air. And then <laughs> you know, to California. Have, what's that? And then to California. Yes. <laughs> you're going to go on an excursion. I do, I wanna take them, I, I wanna take students on in workshops to other areas and, um, you know, that'll be fun. But um, right now, like one of my students, he paints the portrait. So we bring a live model in and the model will pose for him. And then the other students are working on different projects. They either have him working from something live, like a still life, or I let them work from photos, you know, but um, still kind of keeping in line with the principles that I teach. And they they make me That's happy because they make me feel like I'm actually teaching them something. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we have a little bit of time left. Is there anything anybody who has a second question for Julie, Stephanie? So, if I am uh, looking to, do, do you also do you teach online as well, Julie? Yeah. So, if someone is looking to um, to take courses with you online or to buy your work online, where would they go? So I have two websites. One is to specifically for the um, teaching, which is Paint with Julie Brayton. And then I have my Julie Brayton Fine Art, which um, on Julie Brayton Fine Art, I've kind of streamlined it where, I, and I'm still building it, but I have my work now on Fine Art America, which is really great because a person can go in, pick their substrate, pick their matting and framing, and it gets delivered to them from that company. But it's, there's a lot to choose from of my work. So um, it's an easy way for them to buy prints. As far as the available work, um, I still need to upload that, but um, that would come obviously from me, but. <laughs> <laughs> so Julie Brayton Fine Art and Paint with Julie Brayton. Yes. Dot com. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. I think we have time for one or two uh, more quick questions. Anybody? Um, I'm curious about uh, your process. Of, uh, yeah, because I love how you paint the water and movement and light. But uh, my question, yeah, just to about 
water if you are you uh, painting on like in layer uh, how do you proceed painting water and uh, movement in water movement there yes there is some layering i mean all of the work i do involves a a, a certain amount of layering um try to get the first impression of the the colors that are in the water um so let's say it's a wave you know that a lot of people i i'm fascinated with a variety of things but a lot of people like that glow that comes from a backlit wave um mm -hmm. I really found it interesting. Unfortunately, it's called red tide, which is not like a healthy thing for water, but when the wave has that seaweed in it, it's got a nice red, you know. But anyway, I'll get that glow that people like in that backlit wave and I'll, um, I don't know, it's so intuitive, it's kind of hard to explain, but um, it's just kind of doing detail so like you would anything else, you know, you get the, but are you uh, uh, painting like the um, rough at the beginnings, the mm, the main color, and then go more in particular? Yeah, for the I, reflecting I, of the. I start out with you know a, a, a strong impression of the general areas of the water because there's foreground and background differences, mm -hmm. and then go in and bring in the detail of the movement of the wave um and the light or the the yeah. water oh the thank you <laughs> thank so you. thank you in in addition to that uh, is that also like how you build your compositions because um like do you do a lot of sketches before you start a painting or uh is it something that grows more naturally I'm impatient, so <laughs> I just go for it. Um, you know, I have a general idea of how composition should work to make it pleasing. So I try to avoid things being smack dab in the middle, or, you know, I try to guide the viewer in with either the light or the path of the marsh, waterway, or whatever the case may be. But, um, Usually a scene, you know, I will edit, I'll take things out or add things in, but it's pretty much, I'm just doing it. I don't pencil draw or do any of that kind of stuff. I go in with paint. So my composition gets drawn out with yellow okra. And if I don't like it, I can wipe it out. But then, you know, it's real fast. So <clears throat> I've learned from plein air painting, you have an hour and a half to two hour span of time with consistent light. So there's not a there's not a lot of time to mess around. Um, so I work fast. I don't know, Just, maybe that's made me impatient. <laughs> <laughs> so do you start is it does it happen that you start a painting plein air and then finish it off in a studio? I try to, I don't, I, I don't have time to do that for everything. So I try to do that as much as I can because I really like having that study to work from, but uh, that's not always, my life doesn't allow that all the time. So. You can all have goals, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for, for that, Julie. That was thank amazing. You. I'm so happy to. I have learned a little bit more about you and your work. I love the ocean. So this was a real, a real treat. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to all the pictures and video of your upcoming shows and everything. Thank you. <laughs> Stephanie is too, I can see. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so um thank you all for joining us and uh we hope to see you next week we'll be here uh same time same place uh 3 p.m and in the meantime if you have any questions for julie or any of the other members of the group you can post them in the comments of this video wherever you found it in youtube facebook or you can hit up hit us up uh, at the international art alliance.org um and that is where you can find all our information and uh, yeah, I think that's it for this week.
thank you very much. Thank you all for uh, for watching and uh, see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.